What I wouldn't do to have your voice. I was saying that up front on top I, of the show. I heard that earlier. You have nothing to worry about. You have a delightful voice. Uh, when my I'm, when I I'm, go <laughs> when I go through puberty, it'll be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Until that time. For the second time. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get the voice and the Jimmy Neutron thing out of the way because uh, there was a big disappointment in my life. And Martin Short, who was featured with me playing my sidekick right, in that, right. uh, we uh, originally agreed to do this movie because we had seen some designs for Jimmy Neutron and it was our impression that the role was going to be played by you. Well, you know, let me ask you something. <laughs> I saw I saw I saw clips from this movie today uh, and, you and I'm, it was you. I called my lawyers. Yeah, I am Liz, show this. This is clearly a rip off. Yeah. This is yeah. clearly I <clears throat> I want in on I want in on the merchandising. I want a chunk of the action. Yeah. I mean, you Presumably have copyright in your appearance. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I don't think so. NBC uh, has that. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. worth a lot of money, I yeah. assure you. <laughs> well, um, it, it was a disappointment, and Martin feels the same way. I will come after you. I'll crush you all with Although, my legal team. <laughs> the little guy is good. He's, uh, he's smart. He saves uh, at least his little part of the planet. And it would have been charming had you been doing it, because then you and I would have had something in common. You remember we I discussed. I also have a higher uh, voice than the boy who got the part. <laughs> so I could have done but, it myself. Uh, we'd have both have been saving the universe in one way or another. You, that is you and I. We will work together soon, I assure you. I look forward we'll to do it. a buddy comedy where we you know, drive uh -huh. around and go over a bridge and stuff. It'll be fun. <laughs> Let me ask you about a high honor, which I also envy. Madame Tussauds made a wax figure of you, which they're displaying. Is it, it's in London? Is it also here in New York? Yeah, that's a miracle, isn't it? It can be in two places at the same time. The fact is there's, there's more than one, but why do you, why do you envy it? Surely I just you think have... everybody wants a uh, wax, what do you mean, surely I have one? Yeah, surely. Cuckoo, what are you talking about? <laughs> The world doesn't want to see a wax replica of Conan O'Brien. I... But you're, here you are, you're an American institution, at least certainly a New York institution. I'm an American who's been institutionalized, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. I, I want to, uh, thanks for the pity. Um, I, no, but I, I, I think that must be very strange because these, these wax figures, they don't look like wax figures. I've no, seen these things in yeah, person yeah. and they're stunning. Yeah. What's it like to go and look at yourself in quite, 3D. Quite seriously, I found it very, very unnerving. And of course, at the press release, they wanted me to stand nose to nose with my figure, to stand cheek by jowl and so forth. But I didn't want to look at him. Um, <laughs> Why not? Well, I'd be, if I had one, I'd be staring at it all day. So pretty. <laughs> Maybe that's a good reason why you shouldn't have one. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'd be touching it. I, yes, I don't think we yes. should go there at all. Yeah, let's leave that alone, my weird fetish with my own <laughs> wax figure, yeah. Let me ask you about A Christmas Carol. Please. This is not you playing the role with uh, a lot of other people in a stage production. This is you providing, you provide the whole world of A Christmas Carol. You provide mm. the different voices, you provide... Is this not right? This is, yeah, this is uh, just you alone providing even the sound effects. I tell the story, so I'm the narrator. I, I physicalize all of the characters. I, there's some disagreement as to how many, but there's somewhere between 35 and 40 characters. And because I wanted it to be purely an actor's evening, we don't have mechanical sound effects. So I do the sound effects, violins, doorbells, chiming clocks. And, so you're like Geraldo so providing all the sound yeah. effects yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Kerplash. He's good. Geraldo's very good. I could um, use some of that. Yeah. What, so you, what kind of sounds are you doing? Are you actually trying to mimic the sounds? Well, for instance, in the Fezziwig's party, there is a fiddler who plays for the dancing. And uh, would you like a little? Yeah, this? I want to okay. hear this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's not a first-class fiddler, you understand? <laughs> yeah, he's a little out of tune, uh -huh. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I just picture you. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Philharmonic have not yet called, but I'm expecting any moment now. I'd be cheap, too. See, I, I do, I, I, if I... Like I do, like a guy sawing wood, and I would probably, Can we hear that? I would probably work if I was doing the role. I would yeah. just work in all these things that 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 are never in a Christmas Carol. But suddenly, you know, Bob Cratchit made a table. Ladies and gentlemen, then Colonel, oh, yeah, right. I would. <laughs> Very good. Do you do anything else? Just just then, Colonel Clink from Hogan's Heroes showed up. Hogan. <laughs> you know, I'd just be. The whole thing would fall apart. Yeah. You remember that thing that I said about you being an institution? Yeah. It was a no, mistake. No, I know. It's not true. <laughs> I have to ask you, um, 
about this. You uh, you apparently forgot there. You said there are something like thirty two or forty some odd characters yeah. that you do. You once forgot to include some of the children, and you had oh, to improvise yeah. and get them back. You lost some kids I, I while lost, you were doing I, I it. I lost two. I lost two Cratchits. Not once. It was a few nights ago, and uh, my wife was in the audience that night. And halfway through the Cratchits uh, Christmas lunch, she said. I thought they had more children than this. There are two of them missing. Right. Of course, I'm alone on the stage. There's nobody else there. The fact is, I omitted to introduce them into the scene, and then all of a sudden, there they were talking. They had come from nowhere. So I had to lean heavily on their voices and their characterizations whenever they came up. That's what happens when you're alone on stage. The comforting thing is that you can backtrack, go forward, move you can, around. It's a little malleable. You can play around with it a little bit. It's infinitely malleable, yes. You are now shooting the 10th Star Trek movie at this moment, and I know there are a lot of people on the web that want to know what's going on. Anything you can share with us, anything people can look forward to? How long do we have? Oh, we have a little of time, I think, to tell us. Give us, give away something that you're not supposed to give away and oh. get yourself in a lot of trouble. Okay, all right. Um, uh, I'm sitting in the captain's chair of mm -hmm. the Enterprise, all right? How's that? <laughs> Uh, no, I'll tell Just you what. then you saw some wood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then you play the violin. Play the violin. One thing it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have a, a romantic storyline for the captain this time. I, maybe they were, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> you know, it's still time to write in, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the script can be fixed and uh, uh, no romantic storyline for me, but a lot of high energy action. I can tell you, I got to drive for two weeks, our opening two weeks of filming in the desert, uh, 100 miles or so from Los Angeles. A, a, a futuristic 24th century off-road vehicle built by the man who is synonymous with off-road racing, a man called Ivan Stewart, built and designed this real live high-powered off-road vehicle. And it looks like and, something that's from the future. Right. And I drove it everywhere for two weeks. It was a wonderful experience. It's like being in a very uh, high-priced nursery, you know. Right. Mm. You, you know it's just a Ford Probe with some fancy stuff on it. it is, <laughs> I, I assure you it's the real thing.